of going where chilly winds don't blow. I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready every day to go to that place where chilly winds don't blow. And I wonder this morning, are you getting ready? For this is the dressing up room. This is the place where we prepare ourselves to go to a place where chilly winds don't blow. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thanking him for this another day's journey. Truly God has been good to all of us. And if you know God been good to you, I don't care where you are, you ought to just give him a praise right now. For we know it had not been for the love of God on our side, we wouldn't be where we are right now. Through all the stuff that's around us, God is still blessing. And I think uh, I think he deserves a praise. He deserves a hallelujah. He deserves it, it to be recognized for who he is in our life. And you got to understand that we are here not because the vaccine did it, not because of any other thing did it, because God spared us another day's journey. We were trying not to hold you too long, but there is a word from the Lord in the book of Exodus 33 and 17. Exodus 33 and 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Let me say that one more time. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. For a few minutes, we want to talk to you from the subject, stop worrying because God can still do this thing. God can still do this thing. All hips about. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come with thanksgiving. We thank you, Father, for this another day's journey. We thank you for allowing us to stand one more time. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but right now we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We pray now in the mighty name of Jesus that you will hide all that men and women not see him, but see you instead. Allow me to decrease while you increase. Let your Holy Spirit move in this place, touching somebody, saying, I heal and you yet to be saved. Be blessed, we ask. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do only pray. And they all said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Stop worrying. Because God can still do this thing. My brother and sister, in the midst of all the things that are going on around us, if the truth is told, we, uh, we know that the Lord stepped into the situation that are troubling us and seemed to have control over us. There's a song that said, turn it over to Jesus and he'll work it out. Now, I don't want you to sit here and believe that uh, that you don't have some troubles in your life. If by chance you don't wait a while, those things will show up at your address. But if you trust the Lord and know without a doubt that God will move in your situation, and you must also know that he's going to do this thing. And maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice uh, who have been praying about a situation for a long period of time. Maybe you have been petitioning God about it and quit it for quite a while. And perhaps at this phase and at this stage, you started to wonder whether or not God will come through. But I want to keep your hope alive. I, you, you need to keep trusting and believing with all faith and confidence in God. Grandmama used to put it this way. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. In spite of the circumstance, in spite of the difficulty, yes, even in spite of the long period of time that you've been suffering or going through, God can still do this thing. I beg of you this morning not to think of me as being arrogant, but I am convinced that there's someone listening to me along with myself who have some special need that only God can feel. I believe there's someone who, like myself, who have, been, have, have some special need that only God can supply. And if the truth is told, everybody eventually 
have some needs that require special help from God. I'm not talking about the context of vain desires. I'm not speaking of shallow thing that in reality we would do better uh, uh, to do better or better off without. But I'm talking about those things that we desperately need. Those things we qualify as true, bona fide, genuine needs. It's those things that will be qualified as something for which you need the help of God. This thing, I wish I had some help. This thing that is mentioned in our text can be anything that falls upon us when we least expect it. I believe that everybody has a this thing. I, I believe that this thing that we have varies from one to another. Your this thing may not be different, may not be like my this thing, but there are some issues and some areas of need for every for which we all desperately need heavenly help. There, there, there are some situations from which you need divine aid and divine assistance. I believe I'm talking to some folk this morning who have some this thing. Uh, if you're not ashamed to tell it, all of us have some areas of special need that is an issue of great, of great until divine help from an almighty God is absolutely a necessity. In the text, in the text that I read in your hearing, God speaks. And he shares with Moses his knowledge of issues and his knowledge of their concern. And God decided that he would do what needs to be done. And, and I don't know about you, but that, that, that there has been a great encouragement to me. Every time God fixes something for someone else's life, it is a source of encouragement for others. He is able to do the same thing for you and for me. I must confess to you this morning that I got a this thing. Uh, I got a this thing. It tries to mess up my sleep. It tries to interfere with my rest. It tries to burden my spirit. I got a this thing, and anybody who stays on this side of the river long enough will end up with this thing. I, I don't care how holy you are. I don't care how many scriptures you learn to quote. I don't care how big your Bible is. Sooner or later, you will end up with a this thing. I believe that there's somebody else beside me who knows something about this thing. Your this thing can get so bad until it can mess up your appetite. It can even get bad with your spirit and your attitude. Can I get a witness in here? Yes, yeah, this thing can have you lying awake at night worrying about this or worrying about that. And this thing can even weigh you down. It can even bring tears to your eye. Your this thing can even come from a doctor's report. Even if you come to church, it will try to mess you up to the point that you can't even get into the service. Everybody eventually experience a this thing. Someone this thing. Maybe a sickness for which you need healing. Somebody is this thing. Maybe a troubled marriage which you need help of the God to salvage or the rescue. Somebody else that may say that my this thing is a problem on the job that has gone from bad to worse. Somebody else might say that my this thing is not a job at all. My this thing is struggling with unemployment. That's my this thing. Somebody else may say my this thing is having to struggle from paycheck to paycheck, trying my best to make ends meet, and sometimes I can't even meet the Ends. I wish I had some help in here. This, this thing of life can be many. It can be grief resulting from the passing of a loved one. When you have to, when you, when you have to suffer in secret and hellhounds are on your track and you can't even talk about it or share it with others. That can't be a difficult issue to deal with. That somebody this thing. I receive help and I received therapy, physically speaking, from the story and the account provided to us in this 33rd 30, uh, chapter of the book of Exodus. I must hurry and get here and tell somebody 
who's in their, on their last leg, to tell somebody who's just about to throw in the towel, to tell somebody who's just about to abandon all of your hope and the last of your faith to hold on just a little while longer. If you're suffering with this thing, there's hope for you. If you're having to deal with this thing, help for you, and you'll think this thing is available. For the record informs us, in our text of many important and powerful things, ours is the result of Moses having been up in the mountains with God. Moses had been summoned by God to come up higher into the mountain, for God had something to give Moses in order that Moses could turn and give it to the people. And while Moses was in the mountain talking with God, the people below the mountain had turned their backs on God. And you know, I, I, I could not help but to think how shallow-minded, how narrow-minded they were. For you see, even if Moses had died, that didn't mean that God had died. I think I ought to tell you that if I die before a nightfall, that does not mean that anything has been gone wrong with our God. Scripture tells us that with the help of Abraham, Moses' brother made themselves a God. Now, in reality, Aaron should have been stronger. Aaron should have said no. He should have told them that they had the God that they needed. And that's my position before you this morning. I don't need some other God because when you have the true and the living God, when you have the real thing, you have all the God that you ever need. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And scripture tells us that while this scene was going on, Moses stepped down from the mountain and witnessed what was going on and was filled with anger. Moses was disturbed by what he saw and here, here is a people who God had been good to had soon forgot about the God who brought them out of the bondage. Let me pause and tell you uh, that sometimes when I look at our people as a race, some of the things I see now being done by each other, it makes me wonder if we're serving the same God. When I look at where we come from and I look at some of the things that I see that are shameful to us, not only as a race, but also as followers of Christ, it causes me to drop my head inside and say, how in the world could we end up where we are now when we consider how far God had brought us from? That's why Moses was angry. He remembered all that God had done, and, and, that, 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 and, that, and that brings me to the first thing I, I see identified in the text, and that is the danger of sin. I wish I had some help. Now, now I, I know there's a whole lot of folks who don't like to talk about sin. And I know why uh, some of us are kind of skittish about talking about it. It's, it's because we've all done it. So scripture tells us that all, that, 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 that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody under the sound of voice has fallen victim to some kind of sin. From the oldest to the youngest, we've all fall victim to sin. And the first thing I see in the text is the danger of sin. How do I know that sin is dangerous? First of all, because the scripture tells us, Moses said to the children of Israel, everybody who's on the Lord's side, step over here where I am. You see, if you're going to be on the Lord's side, you can't play both sides of the fence. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Moses said, everybody who's on the Lord's side, step over here. And the record tells us that about 3,000 were killed because they were not on the Lord's side. Oh, I must not hold you. But I think I ought to tell you that's what sin will do to you. Sin can make you our days shorter. Sin, man, so many people have ended up in a premature or early grade because of the involvement with a sinful behavior. If you remember, God made Adam and Eve to live for an eternity in the garden, but when they got tied up with sin, death stepped in and brought their lives to an end. And not only will sin shorten your days, 
but something else worse happened. For God spoke to Moses and said, I'm going to let the children of Israel go over into the promised land, but I'm not going with them. So the second thing that makes sin dangerous is that the sinful ways can sometimes call God to leave us. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but when I do wrong, i rather for God to whip me than to leave me. Whatever the Lord do to me, I just don't want him to leave me. You need to understand that there are too many demons and demonettes in this world for me to deal with by myself. There are all kinds of troubles and trials in this world for me to try to deal with by myself. You see, if the Lord whipped me, that at least means that he still has his hands on me. I, I want the Lord to stay with me. All because I can't make it by myself. The record tells us that when God spoke to Moses and informed Moses that he wasn't going over to Canaan land with the children of Israel. God went on to say that he would let an angel go over there with them. It was then that Moses became troubled. So Moses went to the tabernacle, went to the church to meet with God. Listen, if you will, there comes a time when you need to talk with the Lord. And, and that means to me, that, that brings me to the second thing I see revealed in this story. And that is the value of a godly intercessor who can get a prayer through to God. And if the truth is told this morning, we all need somebody who can talk to God on our behalf. One of the things I like about an intercessor is the fact that a true godly intercessor is somebody who does not pray for themselves, but prays for somebody else. And I submit to you this morning that you and I have made it this far uh, as we have in life, not based on our prayer, but somebody else who was closely connected to God called our names over and over again. Sometimes they talk to God on our behalf in the midnight hour. I heard a songwriter say, somebody prayed for me had me on their mind and took the time and prayed for me. And the songwriter also said, I'm so glad that they prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Moses went to the tabernacle to have a talk with God. And even though I was not there, I have some idea of some of the things that Moses said to God. Moses spoke to God, not only on Moses' behalf, but on behalf of the children of Israel. You see, Moses had not committed this offense. Moses had nothing to do with the golden calf. Moses was up in the mountain with God, but Moses now intercedes on behalf of the children of Israel. Talking to God, saying, no doubt, Lord, I know they messed up. But please, Lord, don't walk away. I can hear Moses saying to God, Father, the thing that is so greatly to serve me is when, you, when I heard you say that you were not going over into the promised land with the children of Israel. That troubled me so much until I had to come and talk to you uh, in an intercessory prayer. I hear Moses saying to God, Lord, you said you wasn't going, but you said you would let an angel go with them. He got to tell you that an angel just ain't good enough. Because as wonderful as an angel is, it's still no substitute for you. I can hear Moses saying, we need more than an angel. For Father, when, it, the, when that burning bush was set on fire, and I heard a voice talking to me from that burning bush. That voice was not the voice of an angel. That voice came from you. And all oh, I could hear Moses saying that it was not an angel who delivered the children of God out of the land of Egypt. Lord, it was you. It was not an angel who parted waters of the Red Sea. Lord, it was done 
by you. Lord, it was not an angel who rained down manna from heaven. It was done by you. It was not an angel who sweetened the bitter waters of Myra. That was you. And all I'm saying, Lord, is that we can't make it without you. Lord, we can't survive without you. And you know, I can hear Moses saying that we need something better than an angel. It's you, Lord, that we need. And the record tells us that Moses was still crying out to the Lord. I can hear him saying, Lord, we can't make it over there in Canaan without you. I know the land flows with milk and honey, but we still need you. I know over there, there are some houses that we won't have to build, and vineyards and arches that we won't have to plant. I know that there are all kinds of blessings over there, but Lord, they will be all meaningless uh, without you. And oh, uh, as I leave you this morning, uh, if it's all right, uh, if I can talk to you uh, before I leave you, uh, come uh, a little closer. Uh, come here, uh, those of you uh, who think money uh, is all you need. Uh, for after you get uh, all the money, uh, that you think you want, uh, you will uh, still be unsatisfied uh, because our God uh, is the only one uh, who is able uh, to supply your needs. Uh, come here, uh, those of you uh, who think that if you're going to uh, in a certain position uh, and prestige and honor, uh, but you will be uh, unsatisfied uh, because no matter uh, how high you get, uh, you will still uh, have to be looking up uh, to our God. Uh, Moses said uh, that we need you, uh, we gotta have you. Uh, Moses said, uh, now. Uh, there was some confused folks uh, who thought they could make it uh, with the cab. Uh, but there was some of us uh, who were clothed uh, in our right mind. Uh, there's some of us uh, who uh, deep in the spirit uh, who knows uh, that it's you, Lord, uh, that we need. Uh, and uh, the record tells us that, that Moses uh, kept on talking to God, and then uh, God finally uh, spoke out to Moses, uh, listen, Moses, uh, I'm going to reverse uh, my decision, uh, Moses, uh, since you've been uh, praying with such power, uh, since you reversed, I'm going to reverse uh, my decision, and I heard God saying that, that thing uh, that you're talking about, that, that thing that, that you've been needing me, that, that thing that, that you've been asking for, that Moses, that I just want to tell you that I will uh, do this thing, and oh, uh, somebody that, under the sound of my voice, that I ought to shout this morning, that I know that I got to leave you, that, but I need to tell you that one more thing, that, that is, uh, but this thing that I'm talking about that, is the importance uh, of God's grace. Uh, when uh, you got the grace of God, uh, he's able uh, to help you uh, on your way. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, let me talk to you uh, for just a few minutes. Uh, I got to tell you. That when you're in the midst of this thing, God is right there with you. And I don't know what you this thing is, but I do know that God is still able to do this.
greatest thing when you're burning down and it seems like the weight of the world is on your shoulder. That's a this thing. But I'm so glad I have a God that's a heavy load carrier. It's your chance you hear him under my voice and you have a way out of no way. That's a this thing. Aren't you glad that we got a God that's able to make a way out of no way? Somebody this morning has a this thing. I saw mind on my way to glory to tell you that don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. The God we serve, he's able. And I wonder this morning, is there anybody under the sound of my voice who can help me testify that God is able? I know he's able. How you know all that is able? Tried him a long time ago. Every time I turn around, he keeps right on blessing me.
There may be someone listening or watching this who is looking for a church home. There may be someone who needs Christ in their life. At this opportunity, here we are. Give us a call and we'll point you in the right direction. God bless your heart and may he keep you is our prayer. Don't worry. God is still doing his thing. All his about. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come this morning with thanksgiving, thanking you for things well as they are. For when we look around, it could have been the other way. But Master, you allowed us to roll on just a little while longer. Master, I pray that you'll bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Strengthen them where they're weak. And build them up where they're torn down. I pray this morning that you will comfort those who have lost loved ones. Master, I pray this morning that you'll bless love and peace and their members one by one. Bless those members that strayed away for whatever reason that you'll bring them back into the fall. Master, I pray that you'll strengthen us through this pandemic. Master, we, most of us have gotten the shots, but only you can cure. Most of us have tried to avoid the virus, Master, but only you know and in control. I pray right now that when we get weary during this shutdown time, that you will comfort us and strengthen us. Master, I ask that you will heal those who have been tested positive. And I ask that you will once again comfort those who have lost loved ones to this COVID. And Master, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Be blessed we ask. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do humbly pray. And they all said amen, amen, and amen.